Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this especially exciting Mixner Media tutorial, we're going to be looking at some of the great new color features inside of Premiere Pro 2015. Old versions of Premiere had really, really terrible color correction tools, which is sad because it's such a great editor. But now, you have real color tools that you can actually do real grades with, you know, like no problem. It's still not DaVinci Resolve, but I'm probably not going to be going into speed grade anymore, so... Without further ado, let's hop into Premiere Pro and get started. So here I've got this little sequence of stuff that I'm working on for something that you guys will see very soon, I'm sure. A little teaser of this will also be in this video. So in order to get to your color tools, you're going to go over to our effects and then select Lumetri Color and just drag this on our clip. And in here you see you get these different sections, vignette, color wheels, curves, creative, and basic correction. And you can use all of these independently if you want or together. From playing around with it a little bit, using them all together might be a bit much, but it's sort of like using all the buttons inside of a node of DaVinci Resolve at once. You don't really need to do it, but they're there in case you want it. So just start at the top, which is basic correction, which is basically sort of like mini camera raw. So you see you've got temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, whites, black, saturation, all that. Quick little auto button, which is unimpressive, but fine. And you can, of course, turn it on and off. And you can turn all of the sections on and off independently if you want to try different things, different places. And you can, of course, also mask out this effect just like any other effect in Premiere. So first of all, you can import a LUT. You can use any of these that they have here, which are fine. Or you can go to custom and go to some of your LUTs. So we'll just go to simple sitcom because I like that one. So in here you can attend, adjust temperature if you want to warm it up and then the tint if you want to make it really crazy. We're going to leave tint alone. You can also adjust exposure if you want to bump it up just a bit. Contrast, we'll bring it back down some. Highlights will bring up, shadows will bring up, whites will bring down, blacks will bring down, and that looks pretty bad. But you know sort of what all these tools do already, exposure, contrast, highlights, white shadows, blacks, etc. Saturation, it's a saturation control that actually works. Let me just go ahead and reset everything. And you can see this is the first thing that really excited me is you have a saturation control that actually does a good job of saturating your image. The old saturation tool in Premiere Pro was awful and added all sorts of terrible artifacts to your footage unless you went into like the three-way color corrector and then used that saturation and then didn't go up very high so you had to add two of the effects and it was just a big nightmare. But here, super easy, just like that. So going down from basic correction, we get to creative. Ooh, and this is sort of just like look building on top of your basic correction. So it's sort of like going from your color correction to your color grading here. And you can use each of them independently. Like I said before, you can add another look if you want. And then you can even adjust the how much of that look is applied. So do clean NR punch, whatever. And you can see you can fade it down and fade it up. And I'm not a huge fan of that. So we'll just reset all that. And then this is my favorite part, faded film. In order to show you this, I will go ahead and add one of my LUTs here. This is basically the hipster slider, which I think is hilarious. So you just drag this up and you see, boom, hip. It's called faded film. It basically just clips your shadows and I think it even desaturates them. So that's just a lot of fun right there. I've had a great time with that. Next is sharpen, which sharpens the image just like you would expect. Nothing too exciting there. Vibrance is just like any other vibrance control in any of the CC programs where it affects saturation while leaving the skin tones alone pretty much. It's basically just an already done hue versus saturation control. And then of course another saturation control which goes way up. So you can really, if you're like me at all and you way oversaturate stuff, you can really make stuff look disgusting, which is a great option to have. Down here it starts to get pretty neat. You've got your shadow tint and highlight tint. And what this does is I will drop that let back on here. And you can see if we want to make our shadows blue, which is a very typical thing to do. You can see the shadows getting blue there. And it does a really nice job of it too while leaving some actual like blackness in there. And you can go to red. And it does a really great job, a really, really class act tool. And then highlights the same. So make them yellow just like we're in Europe where apparently all highlights are yellow. And then of course tint balance, which whenever you have stuff all done crazy, it will move stuff around which I believe selects sort of the midpoint between these two. So you can see if you want the highlights to come down more into the shadows, you bring it that way. If you want the shadows to go more into the highlights, you bring it that way, which is a really, really nice option to have. It's sort of like a pivot control inside of DaVinci Resolve. Let's go ahead and reset all of this and then collapse creative. Now we'll go down to curves, which a lot of you are familiar with this curve, our standard RGB curve where you can do your 
little S curves and make things look nice. And this, this is a really exciting thing about this one is that only affects the luminance channel when you only have the luminance channel selected, which I'm pretty sure in the other one, you'd be automatically have all of them selected, which would increase the saturation, which was not what you wanted or it would look like it increased the saturation. So this is a really nice, clean Luma contrast. You can, of course, do your simple, you know, hipster vibe here with your blue channel. If you want, and we'll just reset that. And now down here, I'm really, this is the most exciting part for me because I always want this. It's the hue versus saturation curve. And if you watch my DaVinci Resolve tutorials, you know how much I love this guy. This one looks weird because it's a circle, but it's the exact same thing. You've got your different hues you can select and then going outside of the circle will make it more saturated and going into the center of the circle will make it less saturated. So we'll just select some blue right here and bring it up and you can see in the sky over there, probably can't see it too much. Let's go increase the saturation overall and that will probably help us out. That's too much. And you can see over in the sky, it's really just affecting the blues and leaving all the other stuff alone. So you can do some really cool stuff. I wish it did have a, you know, hue versus luminance and hue versus hue control because those are really great. But hey, I still got to go into DaVinci Resolve for something now, don't I? So let's go ahead and reset this one. Let's go ahead and reset the whole thing. And then we will go down to color wheels. And in color wheels, it's just our normal color wheels in case you just, this is how you're comfortable grading. So you can make your shadows do whatever and bring your midtones up here your highlights over here, just do all sorts of crazy stuff. And then you can also adjust the luminance values of these. So bring your shadows down if you want and your highlights up and then your midtones down and make it really dramatic. Make your highlights yellow. And then you can offset that a little bit over here. And you know, pretty standard look going right there. So nice and simple. And once again, you can activate and deactivate at will. And now finally we get down to vignette, which is kind of the most lackluster feature in this whole thing because it it could use a little bit of extra tweaking. But if you just need a quick and dirty one, you can go lower to get a dark vignette, higher to get a bright vignette for dream sequences and stuff. So let's bring this down a little bit and then you can adjust your midpoint. So you can bring it way in and then your roundness. And then I just wish that they could feather it so much more because if it had like a huge, like a thousand pixel feather, I'd probably use it. But only a hundred, that's, that's not enough for me. So we'll go ahead and bring the midpoint back and, you know, if it's something like that, that's very decent, but you know, I like crazy stuff. So that is just real quick, all of the little buttons inside of the new Lumetri color effect inside of Premiere Pro. It's great. I'm going to be using it all the time. It's going to save me a ton of time and it's going to make me really happy. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Meesner Media YouTube channel. If you want even more Meesner Media stuff, check out our social media, links for which are down in the description below, along with the website, which has some very interesting stuff coming to it soon, which got secretly teased a little bit in this video. Once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.